everyone. Welcome to <clears throat> Pieware Homeschool uh, Master Classes. We're here with Jonathan Sweet from Purdue University. And uh, Jonathan's been a, a beta tester with us, and he's been a user for many, many years. And tonight, we're going to be going over how to make some picture shows. Uh, Jonathan, would you be able to give a little background from your, for yourself? Sure. Um... I've been writing shows for about 15 years now. Uh, started as a uh, um, high school band director in Texas. Um, I figured over the years I've written over 200 shows now. Um, so I uh, wrote for University of Kentucky uh, when I was a grad student there and then went on to uh, Purdue University where I'm the primary drill designer. We actually used um, one other person as a drill designer, uh, Al Tembe from Indiana also. Um, but it's kind of a big undertaking at Purdue. Uh, we've got, if you don't know much about the All-American Marching Band, it's about 385, 386 students uh, in the marching band, no music majors. Um, we uh, had about 1,150 students in the department this last year. So it's a, it's a big undertaking. Uh, but it's all for just the joy of making music, which makes it for a really great environment. That's awesome. That's really, really cool. Well, let's, let's take a look at what we've got. So um, we do a lot of picture shows when we're, uh, when we're designing. And so I kind of wanted to just take you through what our process is um, when we design these shows, because it doesn't just come together uh, writing it just sitting down in front of a computer and deciding i'm going to write a picture show um i cheat uh, i'm not going to lie to you i cheat big time on these things um i go online and search for clip art all the time for uh images that can be used um i'll pull up some images that i've used here i'll turn on screen sharing here in a second uh, so here we go. So here's a, a stick figure that I've used before. Um, here's a surfer dude that I've used before. Um, I did a stick figure lightsaber battle uh, back in 2017. Uh, when we did a John Williams themed show. That's cool. um, so don't be afraid to look for images to trace on Pyware uh, when you're doing things. Um, what, one of them, we just did this uh, detective show this past year. Um, and so I got the uh, detective shield, um, just a clip art detective shield, split it in half, and then wrote Dragnet, like the Dragnet theme, um, on it. Uh, and then we morphed that into Get Smart, because that was the next tune, which morphed into the Pink Panther, uh, which were all clip art images that I just traced um, on Pyware to make it work. So let me talk a little bit about the tracing and how that all works. Um, so if I'm, I'm going to pull up a new drill here. Uh, and you can use two different things when you're tracing these objects. You can either use the props tool or you can use the floor cover tool. I personally, um, I think, Dustin, correct me if I'm wrong, floor cover, cover tool is only in professional. Professional or it's an additional purchase. Okay. Um, I like it a lot because you can change the opacity of your image. Um, and let me show you how that helps you. So let's just go to my surfer dude. If it's at 100%, then I can't see the background. But if I can change it to 50%, then I can see the grid and I can try to align my tracing up with what's happening on the grid and give a few extra um, helping anchors for uh, what's going on drill-wise. Um, when you're doing the 
the tracing, set your um, um, your little density, <laughs> your resolution to, I go eighth step, so I can get the nuances of each curve and things and like that. So let me just show you, I take the pencil tool. Now, if it's straight lines, you don't have to be really dense. But if you're in a curve, you want to be a little bit more dense about what's going on. And you do a point and click instead of a manual drag and trace. Yeah, I just do point and click. Um, I, I find a, it's a little bit more accurate that way. Mm-hmm. And then you can always massage the form once you've got everything in place. Um, and it defaults to a two-step interval. Um, and then I just use a circle for the head. Now, you'll notice that once I do this, let me take away the, the image. Um, it's not terribly clear up here where the head is. So I'm going to expand from where the image had it and pull the head away from the body a little bit. Um, and I'm going to rotate this guy so that he's straight up and down. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is highlight the top of the object. Stretch it out because vertically, as you go higher up into the back of the field, the, the more space you want to have, you want to have more vertical um, spacing in between elements. So now it looks like, if you look at it from this angle, it looks like it's a little bit more thick than it is at the bottom. But really, when you look at it from the, the angle, it looks fine. And even when you're down, if you're at a lower stadium, um, it still looks like a person. So for um, lower stadiums, you want to go even further? Yeah. Let's say if I'm at a, a one or two A school, uh, and I have a, a lower, a lower uh, press. Well, if I'm at a 1A, 2A school mm -hmm. and I'm at lower, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to bring them down just a little bit further. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to stretch my guy out a little bit. Now, here's the thing. When you're doing pictures like this, the smaller your band and the smaller the stadium, the less detail you want in your picture. Because if you have a lot of different things um, hanging on in there, um, if you get really low, um, if I went back to, let's say the, um, I'll save this for right now as a test. And Ray, he was using the resize tool to do that stretch. Yeah. If you get, open the resize tool and then select the stretch option. It allows you to stretch either vertical or horizontal. So like if I went to my Pink Panther, mm -hmm. see, we, we, we're in a bigger stadium. So if you're at a smaller stadium and your density is down here, you're not going to be able to tell what it is right. because there's too many things happening in between. Too much detail happening. Yeah. So with something this detail, you really need a stadium with a big view and a jumbotron. Got it. Um, let's, let's talk about resizing figures. Because not everybody will have a hundred wins on the field to do this particular figure. Um, here's a trick that I learned that I really like. Um, and it's kind of a combination thing. So I'm going to take the select tool and uh, select the whole figure. Um, and then I'm going to take the knife tool and select a pa apply pattern ABC. Thank you for the autosave feature. <laughs> um, and then I'm just going to select one third of what's going on, which is about 30 people. And I'm going to hit delete. So now I've got a figure. Um, I call him a Sunday morning figure. He's nice and holy. 
<laughs> um, and I'm going to select the whole figure again, and I'm going to regroup it together. around the whole figure. Okay. Then I'm gonna take a little trick, take the morph tool, and I'm gonna click the curved shape checkbox. Make it a straight line and then make it a curved shape again. What I just did was I evened up the interval spacing for throughout the whole figure so that everybody's even together. Press enter. And then I'm gonna take the resize tool and see it's three steps, I wanna bring it down to two steps. And so I just took the same figure, and I could do that with the head also. Now he's got a really big head. <laughs> and now you've got a baby figure that can be used with 70 people. Okay. Great. So when you're designing um, pictures, I recommend just starting big and then sizing things down from there instead of trying to so start small because then you're not going to get as much of the nuance in the figure and maybe the curve of the hand and those kind of things. Right. Um, one thing, one thing that you can actually do now, I don't know if you've thought about this, but um, you can, with the version 10, we added the sketch function. So you could actually convert that to a sketch and then apply any number of performers to it. Oh, that's very true. I have not messed with the sketch function as much as I should have. Yeah. But that that then allows you to apply any number of performers to it and then evenly space it out there. Oh, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, what if you have more people? Well, you can add the surfboard in. Um, you can add a sun in. You can add um, uh, a bigger figure, a lot of different things. Let me show you what how this turned out when I wrote the drill originally. This was part of our beach show that we did in 2018. And our opener was wipe out. So we made a stick figure or a running man figure on a surfboard surfing on a wave with the sun in the background. Somebody told me the other day it looks like a coronavirus. <laughs> and I just animated him going back and forth. That's and cool. we did that over 48 counts. So here's the thing. Don't be afraid when you're going to animate your figure. And all we did was straighten out his legs and have him move over a little bit. And then go right back using the copy and paste figure to where we started. And then copy and paste right back to standing up a little taller. Just there and back. Don't be afraid to do that. Um, repetitive motion when you're doing picture shows is really, really effective because the crowd can get into it and go, hey, look, look at this. And they can tell their neighbor what they're seeing. And then they catch on and you start getting um, more of a uh, idea of what's happening. Then the, we just moved him eight to five over. The wave came down. This is where it got a little tough. We rotated him and straightened out his leg while the, uh, the surfboard went one way. And then he fell off the surfboard. Okay. There's, there's nothing um, terribly innovative about what's happening. It's just a matter of tracing and then um, repetitive motion happening over and over again. Um, you know, at, at Purdue, we do, like next year, we have six home football games. So that means seven total shows, a pregame show plus six halftime shows. We have to learn quick. Um, some shows we only have one week to learn. Some shows we have two weeks. Next year, we have two shows that we have three weeks to learn, which gives us a little bit more time to do some detail work. Um, but they've got to be easy to learn. And things like this, when you have repetitive motion, 
whether you're teaching a college band or a non-competitive band that's going to do some picture stuff, or maybe as a special effect in a competitive marching band show. Um, you, you want it to be easy to learn and not something you're going to have to spend um, eight to 10 hours on a single move. You want something that will clip right along. Um, and things like this that are repetitive motion um, make it go by pretty quick. Um, let's talk about uh, pacing of the show. If you're going to put animations in a show, think about where you're going to put them. Or if you're going to put pictures in a show, um, I have found that it's better to do um, abstract art in the opener and start introducing pictures in the closer. Or if you're going to put pictures in the opener, put them in the entire show because people come to expect that as your big hit. It's like watching fireworks. Um, if you're going to put really big fireworks um, in at the beginning of the fireworks show, you better have a pretty big, big finale to finish it out. You don't want to end with a dud. Fair enough. Um, uh, don't be afraid to add props to what's happening. Um, we did a show. Um, let's see if I've got it here. I know I've got it in this PowerPoint presentation that I put together. Um, this one right here, <laughs> we did open up and say, open up wide because it was a doctor's show. We made a prop for a thermometer out of, out of velvet and felt. That's cool. Think, things like that are easy to make and they can add a lot to your production value. Um, another thing, we like to rotate wheels. Rotating wheels is a major pain in the rear end from a visual perspective. Um, but if you're gonna do it, put spokes, like uh, get nylon streamers to go from the middle out with uh, alternates or other uh, type characters um, holding them just to, to help give solidity, uh, solidify what's happening with the uh, the uh, circle that's rotating as it's going by. Otherwise, it's going to flatten out and it's going to be a real pain. I will tell you this, if you're going to rotate circles, um, make sure that your set density is four counts or eight counts at the very most. Don't try to do it with a 16 count or a 32 count interval. Um, you'll never get it clean. Uh, two questions for you, John. Yeah. Um, one, we have a request to potentially get a copy of that PowerPoint if it's available. Yeah, I can do that. I can send that oh. to Dustin and he can get it to whoever needs to. Or I can, can I upload it in the handouts? Yeah, you can do in the handout section there. And, and secondly, how is, do a handout there? Yes, sir. How do you teach a rotating circle? What is the best way of teaching that? Because I know <laughs> I've had that, that question a lot and I've not had firsthand experience of, um, doing that and there's several people who would like to see that yeah i um let me find this or PowerPoint. even tips yeah we uh, we've done uh, it a couple of times here it is right here um oh it's it's too oh. big to do i'll uh i'll i'll find a way to get it to people yeah if you'll if you can just send it to me like dropbox or something i'll get yeah. it converted and emailed out up to everybody sounds good yeah there's some videos in it is why it's so big Oh, perfect. Um, yes, sir. So let's talk about rotating those uh, those wheels. Um, let me pull up a show where we did it. We did it in 2019 in the opener. It was a James Bond show. Opened with that Michael Gaines 007. <laughs> I cheated. I stole. Um, I'm a thief. Um, and then from here, we did eight count segments and rotated the wheels while doing it. And to write those, you uh, do a, um, a combination of float and rotate at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, do I need to show how people how to do that? 
no we can we've done that a couple times we can do it in a minute the okay. the big thing is but uh, how, how teaching, teaching that on the field well i i'm surrounded by engineers at purdue <laughs> And I, and I found that the concept that is involved here is a thing called fluid dynamics. Okay. What it basically means is that at the bottom of the circle, you're going to take smaller steps than you are at the top of the circle. Okay. So now when you're rotating it, you want to aim for an eight to five average um, step size. What that will do will make the rest of the car move at 16 to 5. Everybody else is moving at 8 to 5, so it gives the illusion that the wheels are moving quicker. The people at the bottom are going to take smaller steps, and as they move around, they take bigger steps. And that's why I recommend, if you've never done them before, do it at four-step intervals, because then it's more of a straight line. Otherwise, it's, it's more of a curved path. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to teach curved path with variations in step size as you get to certain points that's where it becomes a super big problem Understand. so i would recommend four step intervals down here on your track mm -hmm. um, and just go point by point and then people will see oh i take a smaller step here oh i take a bigger step here the yeah. other thing i would do is have them have their arms out um, left to right to try and hold the circle <laughs> while they're doing it otherwise what we have found is that it flattens out at the top almost right. every time so the the performers in the wheel would technically not be playing at that point in time well that's for instructional purposes only. Okay. um and once they get the pathway they mm -hmm. can they can do that the other thing you can do is put the nylon um spokes and have right. one person in the middle and then have you know about eight people if you have eight people for each wheel Right. Um, around and then you can hold it and it looks like rims on a car or spokes on a wheel um, right. and that can help keep the circle as well because all those people are doing um, is marching over at 16 to 5 right perfect well thank you sir um, yeah so that's I mean that's the basics of how we how we do our picture shows um, and you, how, we, yeah. Could you go over adding a image one more time? We had a question yeah. just to have that shown one more time. So, yeah, sure. Just to cover it. Yeah, so um, you're either gonna select the floor, the prop tool or the floor cover tool. Okay. Um, they basically will do the same thing with the exception of the floor cover tool. You can change the opacity. So all you're going to do is select that tool, create a box on the floor, and then choose a floor cover image. And um, I have some in this file here. Um, let's select something different. Happy yeah, person. there's a person. He's big. He's happy. <laughs> um, I like using images with invisible backgrounds um, because that makes it a little bit easier for trying to get on the grid. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to put as many things on the grid as humanly possible, um, which I think is a good practice anyway. And then you hit accept. Oh, awesome. He disappeared. Right. Oh, that's because... Yeah, you got to make sure that the props are off. Yeah, uh, David, for uh, you can use a JPEG or a PNG. Uh, the PNG will give you the ability to have the transparent background, as you see here. So right now, the only thing showing in that particular image is the trace or is the performer or the the standing happy person. Um, and then uh, Jason has a question for you, John. Um, what's the most intricate picture you've ever written? I'll tell you what that uh, that one I did of the Pink Panther was about as intricate as I ever want to do. Uh, with um, all the whiskers and everything. With all the yeah, and I can bring that guy back up. Um, that was 2019 part two. Um, he just had a lot going on. Mm -hmm. 
um, and trying to get into this from the get smart from that uh, took some time. Um, I, I probably rewrote this figure three or four times just to make sure I got it right. Right. Um, the, you know, another thing in this, this figure here brought up a couple of minor issues for us. You want to, these big B's, we are trombones. You want to try and avoid things like I did right here of putting trombones vertically with one or two step intervals um, becomes an issue playing. Why you might want to put, I should have put the, the baritones, which are the little bees down there, but I was trying to get the trombones down a little further for their melody. Um, the, some of the most intricate um, animations that I've done. Um, let's see here. This is, this is probably the coolest one. It was probably the hardest one to write. Um, I did a volleyball match with our big bass drum as the volleyball. That's awesome. So, um, now getting into animations are never pretty. It, I'm just letting you know they're sometimes the transitions just just have to evolve and happen. They're not going to be fancy, but um, Trying to get this guy to to stay. Go, going from abstract to picture, it's normally a scatter. Yeah, and we do things like a, either a complete scatter where everybody's taking all the counts, mm -hmm. um, or we do like an eight to five scatter where everybody takes the same size step, mm -hmm. but gets there in different amount of counts. Just depends on how many eight to five steps it takes. Understandable. Um. Do you have uh, an example of one of your shows that you might have started out with uh, abstract and then gone into a picture show? Um, the or do you have any examples of any abstract shows that you're doing and just yeah. how you come up with your ideas for those? Um, this one in particular. Um, the Elton John show that we did last year, um, we got to a big picture here, the E logo for Elton John. But I had to literally chart backwards for five pictures mm -hmm. to get the abstract stuff so it made it look like uh, the E came out of nowhere. I, I see. Um, so a lot of those, um, a lot of our abstract stuff that we do sometimes is function over form okay um, and just what works to get in and out of things mm -hmm. um this one just i tried to keep it on the grid tried to keep it fairly easy um as we're building into saturday night's all right for fighting and then the big hit happens when we hit the big e which happened to be at, i think letter e or something like that because everybody said e every time we got there <laughs> um you know, some shows like, uh, let me see if I can find the Aretha Franklin show that we did. Uh, so you said you've got six shows this year. Are they all going to be picture shows for full shows? Or do you think that you'll have uh, a combination of maybe doing some abstract and then, as you said, ending with pictures in the in the closer or... Um, I cannot speak specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, we keep these things under wraps pretty well um, for various reasons. Right. But I will say that um, I, you, you'll probably see a mix. Right. Um, for instance, we'll, we'll do high school band day is the one where we have, you know, up to 30 high school bands out on the field with us. Uh, but we do an opener. That one will be pretty much abstract from there from the opener all the way through it'll be a song of some sort mm -hmm. um and abstract all the way through whereas uh we might do another show that's a concept show um and we've got some ideas floating around um like you know for instance last year we came up with this elton john show mm -hmm. and uh we we're like well what can we do for elton john i said well what if i made a stick figure playing piano and they're <laughs> like that's cool so i did it um, that's awesome um, what if we made, so we started with making the E, 
then uh, we went to Rocket Man. So I made a Rocket Man that flew across the field mm -hmm. using uh, uh, CO2 tanks to make it look like jet pack. Um, you know, those kind of things. So it, it, we do a mix probably 50, 50, 50, 50. Um, yeah. This Aretha Franklin show was all abstract. Mm -hmm. Um, basically it's all symmetrical drill and, um, I, it was a three week show, but we only had a week and a half to learn the drill. So I'd had to keep it fairly simple. Mm -hmm. Um, but we did things like this. Oh, that's not the set. This one right here where we did um, the figure eight pass through kind of things happening. And that just kind of happened organically just mm -hmm. from uh, writing symmetrical drill. That's awesome. And do you set out uh, to when you're de uh, deciding on a show, do you set out to make it a picture show or does it kind of happen based on the music or? Oh, it depends. Um, usually a show of full production value, if it if there are obvious things that can be pictures, we're mm -hmm. going to do pictures. I see. Um, we Probably. did an America like an Americana show this past year um, mm -hmm. with a big drum feature. It was kind of a big production, but there I mean, we Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy and we're an American band by Grand Funk Railroad were our main tunes. Um, there, there wasn't really any room for pictures. Um, so we did some crazy drill instead, like running around on the field and those kind of things. Right. So we try to have production value in everything that we do, but the pictures, if there's, if there's a way to make pictures, we're going to do it, but we're not going to force an idea on somebody. Understandable. Very cool. Oh, do we have any other questions about uh, creating pictures or any other design questions? We have a question. Um, do you plot musical sections from the beginning? And if not, where does it come in? Do I plot musical selections? Musical sec sections mm -hmm. from the beginning? Um. I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, uh, maybe do you plot out your music with picture shows more or? Oh, I was in drumline brass. Oh, I see. Um, <laughs> well, it depends on if I'm writing for one of my competitive high school bands or if I'm writing for Purdue. Um, for Purdue, um, my apologies to anybody who plays woodwinds. Basically, we put the brass in the front and the woodwinds in the back. <laughs> keep the keep the drum line on the 50 yard line and and hope that it all comes together and then i write the pictures from there uh, we have an idea of what the pictures are supposed to come up with and all that now when i'm uh oh yeah and i see this one of the challenges with is keeping sections together that's where scattering and doing various transitions will really help you a lot um i use things like um pods to get in and out of pictures um, so that I'm only moving around five people at a time or 10 people at a time. Um, or if, um, let me, let me show you, for yeah, instance, if you want an example of those pods, that'd be great. Yeah. I'm going to bring up this beach show. So you saw the uh, the stick figure guy. Mm -hmm. Then after that, he dissolved into these five-person pods. And the five-person pods moved across the field. We had to do that because down here, our dance team had to have a feature right after this um, while we're in a picture to do that. And the guard was moving from the sun all the way over to the next picture. So we let them kind of scatter but everybody else did an organized move. You see the tubas are in two person pods. Everybody else is in five person pods. And then from there, those pods organically moved into this picture. That's cool. Um, 
Could you show that transition, animate yep. through that transition? Very nice. And so you, you're not having 64 counts of chaos. Right. And we told them to hang in their pods for as long as possible in this move. Right. Um, you know, a lot of things you don't have to worry about animating, but if you can keep them in their pods as long as possible, um, that's going to help. Let me show you what I did to get out of that, too, because that's mm -hmm. that turned out pretty cool. So we're in this sun, and the way I drew this is I took a um, clip art of a sun and a clip art of sunglasses, overlaid them on top of each other, and made a happy sunglass um, sun. Awesome. Okay, so that that turned out really good. So what I did from there was we just morphed from this picture, did a 16 count hold, I think, maybe a 20 count hold. And then moved into these 15 person pods. Okay. And then the 15 person pods held, and it was a nice picture integrated with the color guard. And then it moved straight over to be centered back on the 50 yard line. And then from there, we did an eight to five move where everybody moved eight to five to get to their spot to the 3D margarita and shaker of salt. I know not all high school directors can do a margarita and shaker of salt, but we, <laughs> but we got we got away with it, and it was pretty cool. That's pretty fun. Oh, we have another question. Um, if a client wants a picture, no matter what the song is, how would you uh, put one in there, even if the song doesn't really, you know, condone one, if you would? Well, Any ideas. <laughs> I, I would ask the director what picture he wants. Right. And if, if the director goes, well, I'm not really sure, or she goes, um, why don't you come up with the idea? Then you can have a discussion and say, well, you don't want to force the issue. But right. for instance, I had a high school band that did The Greatest Showman this mm -hmm. past year, which I think everybody has. Um, <laughs> and so we made a tent, a circus tent on the field. It mm -hmm. turned out to be their favorite picture of the whole show. They loved it. Um, you know, sometimes things happen organically, um, and that's what you want to look for. You don't want to force a picture when it doesn't really work. Um, you know, if you look up here at the right top right corner, I made a lime with the drum line. Mm -hmm. You can't really tell that's a lime. It's just something fun for the kids to hang on to. Right. Sometimes, sometimes you put that in the show for the kids to go, hey, we're doing this, but nobody's ever going to be able to tell. Um, you just want it to look pretty yeah um do you have any tips on how to uh make smoothly animated pictures like uh oh like animations right so let, you uh, were going back and forth with your uh surfer person yeah um just making sure that that transition when it, when your actual uh picture is animating yeah you know here's here's how i did this guy um, I highlighted the top mm -hmm. and just slid him over at a, he's u using a 7.1 step. I think originally I did an eight to five step just to keep it easy. Right. And then from down here at the bottom, I took the bottom half and just straightened out his leg and tried to make it look as pretty as possible. That's, I mean, that's all I did. Mm -hmm. Um, the biggest thing is having consistency in step size. Um, you're going to have some people that are only moving, you know, like a, you know, 64 to five step. Right. Okay. Really tiny, but you don't want to have people that are right next to each other taking jagged steps. You want to make it as fluid and as organic as possible. Um, so what I would do is wherever you're going to move the most. For instance, at the top of the figure, um, mm -hmm. 
or down here at the leg, move that person first or move that group of people first. And the people that you move the, the least, you move last. And then that way it works a little bit more organically. Understandable. Um, and one other question is, do you find that you have to use facing the line of travel a lot more when you're doing these transitions? Or do you um, have a lot of marching backwards or anything like that? This one in particular, um, no, because it was just there and back. We were able to do slides. Okay. But but as soon as we did this move right here, where everybody's moving eight to five, um, right. the whole the whole thing shifted and everybody was facing direction of travel. So don't be afraid to um, to combine those. Now I will tell you this. It's easier when you have 380 people in the marching band than when you have 40 people in the marching band and you're doing directional faces. So mm -hmm. just keep that in mind when you're, I mean, if you're having 40 people and then all of a sudden the whole band is facing backfield to do an animation, um, you're going to lose some sound. Right. Um, you know, when you have 384 people, you're not going to lose that much sound. Right. <clears throat> um. When writing words, do you know what kind of font to use or oh, that's how, a... do you decide, how do you decide um, cursive or block or? Um, I just did a cool little um, thing on this. Um, where is, here it is. Um, I just did a cool session on this on, um, gosh, Wednesday of this week on mm -hmm. using um, my iPad to integrate um, with that. So I would recommend checking that out. If you search for Pyware on Facebook, you can see how I do some lettering tricks. But like this one, this Elton that I made for the Elton John show, um, I literally went to Microsoft Word, chose a cursive font, typed it in, made a screenshot of it, pasted it on the field, and copied it and just traced it. It, it was that easy. Now, when I'm doing block letters, mm -hmm. um, this was something I came up with using the font. And you can see how I drew that. It's a little bit wonky right through here. But you want to use same size. Um, there are some things. What is the name of the software that I use? It is called... Procreate. Um, and with Procreate, you can purchase brushes online. And in that in that tutorial that I sent that I put on face on a uh, Facebook and YouTube um, on Wednesday, uh, I think it's creating letters um, using Procreate and Pyware. Uh, you can actually trace anything you want and spell out how you want and get the spacing right and then just put it in like an image like you would for anything else and trace the lines and you're going to get a whole lot better um, success quicker while doing that. Um, if you don't have Procreate, you don't have an iPad, type it into Microsoft Word, find a font that you like a lot um, and you can get a, the right spacing that way as well. And you said it was the one for creating letters and numbers? Yep. Okay. And there's a link for that session. Yeah, it's about it's about 20 minutes. Wonderful. Okay, and uh, did we have any qu any other questions? It looks like Doug had questions about balance when you're uh, facing different ways. Yeah, uh, like I said, that's that's a little bit different now. A lot of that comes with where are you putting people? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, I try to keep my my battery and my tube as close to each other, which um, will help your low end of the balance and keep them try towards the 50 and towards the center of the field. But when you start facing different directions, weird things happen. Um, so just getting people to play out and just massaging those transitions um, as you do things. Um, at some point, you have to have the discussion with yourself or your staff, what is more important at this moment? Is um, 
is the visual more important or is the music more important? Um, if you have the right music, then you can, you know, stand and park and bark for a picture. And I always right. recommend stopping, setting the picture before moving it. Um, you know, stop, set the picture, play, and then maybe have a drum feature or something like that to move to something else. Um, with smaller bands, that's going to work a whole lot better than uh, bigger bands. You can get away with a little bit more. Awesome. Well, are there any other questions that we had for John? Any anyone else? Well, thank you, John, for coming on. It's been a wonderful, <clears throat> wonderful thing. Um, very exciting. I love picture shows. They're so entertaining. Very much crowd pleasers. <laughs> well, we have fun doing them. Yeah. So, well, thank you all for attending. Um, be sure tomorrow is going to be a special edition. It's going to be a question and answer with me. So ask me anything you want. We're going to answer it. We'll see you all uh, tomorrow, same time. And then we'll have some more sessions next week. And thank you, you so can... much, John. Yeah, and you can get a hold of me at jonsweet at me.com. I saw one person wanted contact info. Uh, jonsweet at me.com um, is a great way to email me. Um, and I'm usually pretty quick, or you can uh, get me on Facebook. Awesome. Well, thank you, John. Yeah, thank you. you have guys. a wonderful evening. And everyone else, we'll see you next time. Yeah, take care. Take care. <laughs>